Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hidden Archives. Today I will be talking about a sporting event, but not one you've likely heard about. If you watch sports on television today, it's most likely football, basketball, or baseball. While those sports were certainly popular in the 1920s, though, there was another sport that was capturing the imagination of a lot of people, and this was distance swimming. In 1926, Gertrude Ederle became the first woman to swim the English Channel, and this prompted William Wrigley to create a swimming competition for distance swimmers that would rival such a feat. Today, then, I will be talking about the Wrigley Ocean Marathon, specifically the event held in 1927. There are a number of newspaper articles from the time detailing this sporting event in which swimmers attempted to swim from Catalina Island to the California mainland. This was quite a challenge as the distance is greater than that of the English Channel crossing, while the currents are stronger and the water colder. Just before the event began on January 15, 1927, the Baltimore Sun reported that a total of 153 swimmers were expected to compete and stated that Norman Ross was favored to win the $25,000 grand prize, with female contestants Lottie Schommel and Clara Bell Barrett being the only serious contenders for the prize of $15,000 being offered to the first female swimmer to finish. Ross had been in the running to play Tarzan in the movies and only narrowly lost out to Elmer Lincoln. Lottie Schommel had stirred up some controversy by demanding to be allowed to swim nude, as was already allowed for male swimmers. If swimming nude is okay for men, it should be okay for us too, she told the press. With 10 pounds of bear grease, sorry, but there's nothing to see anyway. Apparently, the reasoning for, for swimming unencumbered was that the heavy wool suits that were standard at the time slowed the swimmers down significantly as they would become waterlogged and weighed 9 pounds when wet. Instead, many of the male swimmers wore only a pair of brief trunks, or in some cases nothing but a thick coating of axle grease, or the bear grease as Lai Shoma had called it, which served to insulate them against the cold water, which was about 54 degrees. In that time period, male nudity was considered acceptable in certain contexts by much of the population, even when females were present, although this differed based on location, and male swimmers would politely cover themselves when cameras were present. Also, most swimmers did at least wear a towel around themselves until just before entering the water, while also having blankets in their trailing boats to throw over themselves when emerging from the water at the end. Each competitor had a boat to follow them as they swam with numbers on them to match the swimmer they accompanied, but they were not allowed to touch the side of the boat unless they were dropping out of the race. In a January 14, 1927 article, the New York Times stated that Wrigley was spending an additional $15,000 to ensure the safety of the swimmers, including having the steamship Avalon equipped as a hospital ship and standing by. When the time came for the race to begin, about a third of the would-be competitors decided to drop out beforehand. Only 102 swimmers entered the water, including 88 male and 14 female swimmers. Most of the ones who began dropped out quickly, and even some of the more seasoned swimmers didn't last for more than a few hours. In an early morning release on January 16, 1927, the New York Times reported that Lottie Schommel had dropped out due to a cramp, but also that Ross was trailing behind George Young, a 17-year-old swimmer who had traveled all the way from Toronto, Canada to compete. Along the coast, people waited in their cars with headlights on as, uh, as Young neared the shore, by this point two miles ahead of Norman Ross. He had removed his trunks some miles back. As he reached the shore, he quickly darted for his trail boat as it landed on the beach and grabbed a blanket to wrap around himself. Two days later, Wrigley presented Young with the prize money while warning him not to be taken in by confidence men who would have him make unwise investments. Young was an instant star, but he was never able to capitalize on his fame. He was given several offers to star in movies in Hollywood, but he turned them down, holding out for more money. His prize money quickly dried up, and the movie offers went away. He went back to Canada and eventually became a park ranger at Niagara Falls. He passed away from a heart attack in 1972. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Have a nice day.